Uh, hey there. Uh, oh, a little slippery on the feet there. Uh, I'm Dave, and I'm here to talk about uh, Dave's Picks Volume uh, 14. Sorry, it's got a bird shadow over my head. I wanted to see what it was. It was a seagull. It wasn't that exciting. Um, and I'm here. It's a little cool out today. It's surprising. It's April uh, 15th, I think, and I'm uh, recording this. And uh, it's like we bypassed winter this year, and it's decided to show up. Uh, I, you know, this isn't winter. This is nice. This is spring. But it's cooler than it's been. So if uh, if I cut this a little short, it's just because I'm because I'm lame and uh, I'm cold. But anyhow, uh, Dave's picks volume um, 14, which is amazing. I'll, I'll tell you, when we started this series in 2012, which really meant going to kind of summer of 2011. We started thinking about the series, and I remember mapping out the series, and you know, just on a piece of paper, actually more in my head. And I'd mapped it out as uh, really I'd done the first 15, not specific shows, but just the trajectory of it and how we were going to focus on things. And we've completely veered away from everything that I'd kind of thought about. But now that we're number 14, uh, I think everybody involved, uh, including hopefully you, the people who are checking these CDs out, um, have been digging what we're doing because we certainly enjoy doing it uh, a lot. And it's been a ton of fun. Uh, and plenty more to come. That's kind of my point is that even though we're at 14, I, there's really no end in sight as far as uh, I'm concerned and I think everybody else is. So we hope this continues for a long time. Um, so, as you probably know, because we announced it back in January when we were ending the subscriptions, uh, Deus Fix 14, of course, is from March 26th, 1972 at the Academy of Music in New York City. This is the fifth night of a seven-night run at the Academy of Music, March 26th, big day in music history. Uh, it was the day uh, Beethoven died, about 150 years before this or so. Um, it is the date of my first Grateful Dead show 15 years later on March 26, 1987. So, uh, lots going on in the music world on March 26. Um, I think this is the only March 26 dead show I ever saw, actually. Uh, I saw a lot of tours right through the end of March, and seeing the 26 was always off. But nonetheless, uh, great show. Okay, a little bit of background. Grateful Dead, in the fall of uh, 1971, Pigpen, of course, sat out for uh, the tour, the uh, October-November shows. He came back on December 1st, at which point we were back to, and Mickey, of course, had left in early 71. So in uh, late 71, we have just Keith, and then Pigpen joined, so Keith, uh, Keith is on piano, Pigpen is on organ, and, uh, and harmonica and singing, of course. Um, and then by March of 72, with the, the seven-night run at the Academy of Music, which is right before they went off to Europe, you know, for all I know, maybe it was just a way to make a couple bucks to get them over to Europe, because they weren't making a lot in Europe. Thankfully, the album was really good, and I think they recouped their costs at least, uh, but it was just a good party, I think. Um, a really good time for them to go over and experience that. And so they started with the Seven Nights at the Academy of Music, and it's an interesting time. I've talked about this before, Transitional Dead. And, and to me, all Grateful Dead tours, months, years, they're all transitional of one way or another. And uh, what I find with these shows, this the, the, specifically the March 72 Academy of Music, it's that transitional dead from the late 71 sound when they're finally really getting Keith incorporated into the band, Pigpen has returned, and then the Europe 72 sound is a completely different sound, and then after Europe 72, Pigpen played one more show in June of 72 at the Hollywood Bowl, and then by summer of 72, he was gone from the band forever, so it was yet another Grateful Dead. So I find these shows to be very transitional, kind of that 1971 vibe, late 71, and yet it's definitely the distinct uh, 1972 exploratory uh, sequencing of, of songs, uh, just the slippery, uh, of the way um, the Grateful Dead would play in Europe 72. So it's kind of a precursor to Europe 72, certainly some of the shows at the Academy of Music, including this one, I think, um, are just as good as some of the Europe shows. And uh, I'll say this, that when we did Dick's Picks Volume 30 uh, back in uh, 2003, I guess, 2004, um, it was the March 28th show, the final night of this run. And it was really between these two shows. We had them down between the March 26th and the March 28th show. And uh, it's one of those times when, you, I don't wanna say you flip a coin, but it's that close. Uh, we recently, recently, 10 years ago, Somebody's screaming. Um, we did a, a recent, um, oh, not recent, a while ago, we did a DVD of the Buffalo 89 show, and then a few, couple years ago we did the Philadelphia show from three nights later. Um, and those, it was a similar situation where we could have gone either way with either of those releases, and in this case uh, it was the same thing where we went with the March 28th show, which we're very happy with. Um, but it could have easily been this one, in which case this Dave's Picks 14 would have just probably been the March 28th. Um, 
A couple of highlights, uh, well there's a lot of them. We open up kind of a typical opener for the time, greatest story ever told, Cold Rain and Snow. Uh, a few of the newer pig pen songs, uh, Mr. Charlie from 71, and then Chinatown Shuffle, and then the big one is uh, The Stranger, Two Souls in Communion, which interestingly came late in the second set, almost like the ballad slot song. Uh, it actually even came after a ballad, it came after Warfrat, um, right before Not Fade going down the road, Not Fade to end the show. Um, so the, Excellent version of The Stranger, of Two Souls in Communion. Um, and the other real big pig pen one here is uh, Good Lovin'. And this is really one of the last ever pig pen rave ups uh, on American soil. Uh, of course, in Europe, he, he played some great stuff Love Light, Good Lovin', of course, almost every night, uh, Caution. He was doing some amazing stuff in Europe, but for America, this is one of, if not the last big pig pen rave up where he just really goes nuts. And it's interesting because it's one of those good lovin's that both the band is jamming really hard underneath them, but he's also rapping and doing some incredible improvisational rapping. So to me, it's a it's a perfect version of good lovin, and it's long. It's about 20 minutes long. So for you pig pen fans out there, which probably most of us are, um, I certainly am. Uh, you get that. You also get a great playing in the band um, as it was beginning to become an exploratory song when the, it debuted exactly a little over a year before, 13 months before this. It was just this little five minute song, four or five minutes, and it was good, but there's no jam. And then by late 71, they started expanding it to six, seven minutes. And then by the Academy of Music, they brought it up to the eight, nine, ten minute mark. And then Europe 72 was consistently nine or ten, that by the end of Europe 72, they got it up to 16, 17 minutes at the Lyceum in, uh, in London. And that's where it would kind of stay for the rest of 72. And then 73, 74, you get even longer versions of it. Um, so uh, playing in the band, great version, and then uh, a lot of other kind of classic songs from the time. Remember, Weir was just finishing up recording uh, Ace, so we have Looks Like Rain, Greatest Story Ever Told, I mentioned, uh, Black Throated Wind uh, playing in the band. Um, they didn't do Walk in the Sunshine, they didn't do Cassidy, um, but they did They did a lot of Ace. You know, but, oh, uh, They didn't do One More Saturday Night. Um, these were all songs that were on Ace, interesting. Uh, great album, by the way, and it is a Grateful Dead record, let's face it. Um, Dave Torbert plays bass a little bit, but it's a Grateful Dead record, Phil's on it. Uh, the only one who's uh, not on it is Pigpen. Um, so yeah, Ace, if you haven't checked out Ace in a while, I would suggest playing Ace, um, Mickey Hart's Rolling Thunder, and Jerry's first album, The Wheel. Uh, Kind of back to back, all came out in 1972. Tremendous albums, and I've always found uh, Mickey's album. I won't even say underrated because I think those who know it know how good an album Rolling Thunder is. Um, but it's really up there with David Crosby's "If I Could Only Remember My Name," where it's a, a, an album of great music by great musicians, Bay Area All Stars, if you want to call it that. But everybody, everybody from the Airplane and Quicksilver and CSN and, and, and the Dead, of course, uh, on, on Rolling Thunder. Um, highly recommend you check out Rolling Thunder if you don't know. Tremendous album. Um, so uh, what else do we have? Oh, and then the big second set jam, of course. We've got a truck and other one. Um, and the truck and goes way out there. It's an incredible jam coming out of truck. Really one of the best to date, I think. And our liner note writer, I'll also mention Jesse Jarno. Uh, if you don't know that name, which you probably do if you read about the dead and you read about music, um, Jesse Jarno. Uh, you will know this name if you don't know it. He's an incredible writer and he's a good guy. I got to know him at the uh, San Jose Dead Conference back in November a little bit and um, just got a really good vibe from him. A very smart guy, young guy, uh, and a, he's, he's interesting and interested and eager. And he's very smart and he's an excellent writer. So Jesse Jarno, uh, you know, welcome to um, what we do. And uh, I just want to say we got tremendous liner notes by Jesse in this. And, and he really talks about that the uh, truck in here being a big expansive version. So the trucking goes into a, just a great version of the other one. As kind of you'd expect from that late 71, early 72 vibe, kind of what you'd expect from Europe 72. Um, and then we've got a, a really beautiful version of Warfrat, which was about a year old, along with all that other stuff debuted at the Porchester shows in, in uh, February 71. And then, as I say, uh, The Stranger, Two Souls, and Communion kind of comes late in the set. And then we've got Not Fade going down the road, Not Fade, all of which, are incredible, just really rocking the the, the not fade away. The first part of it goes into some great, great big jams towards the end. Um, so again, uh, this is a tremendous show. Uh, I, I'd like to think everything we do is is a tremendous show, but uh, this one is really one that I've put on a lot over the years, and I've kind of kept away from putting it out as a release for a little while because of Dick's Picks Volume 30 with the March 28th show, and this show is very different 
uh, but it's also very similar uh, because it was two days apart. But as any dead show is, a uh, completely unique experience. So um, do check this one out. Uh, I'll also say, uh, as you probably know, the Dave's Picks have been selling out faster and faster every time we put one out. Um, and we did the, the Winterland 224.74, sold in a few days, and last year in 2014, they all sold out, some of them within a day or two. So if you're watching this video or if you've got the email from DeadNet or see it on the Facebook thing, um, and you want this, don't wait, just buy it, uh, or don't, I don't care, but if you do want it, that's what I care about. I just don't want people getting shut out because it will sell out within a few days, and it is a good one, and it's a rare one. Um, I don't think the board tape of this has really circulated too widely. It's been around, sure, as everything has, but uh, it sounds great. Uh, kudos to Jeffrey Norman, as always, for making it sound so good and full and rich. Um, yeah, I, I really like this one. Again, it's got that Europe 72 sound that you probably love, and it's got that late 71 sound. Think of Felt Forum, and think of St. Louis and Ann Arbor and shows like that. Um, it's kind of got that vibe as well. So again, I'm coming back to what I said a few minutes ago, transitional dead, and I love it. Um, a really good stuff. A uh, bit of a teaser for volume 15. I have no idea, none, zero. Uh, I've got, sorry, I shouldn't say none. I've got about five or six shows from different eras uh, that we're sorting through right now that we should decide within a month, but uh, stay tuned for that probably in uh, maybe June or July, I guess, when we talk about uh, Dave's Picks Volume 15. But we do have some uh, good ideas. I, I think they're good ideas. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people about them, listening to a lot of music, and, uh, and big stuff coming up for uh, 2015 outside of the Dave's Picks series. A lot of people have been asking me uh, what's coming, and uh, I'll let Rhino kind of dictate when that gets announced and, and what it is, but it's pretty cool. Uh, if you're Deadhead, I think you're going to be excited by this one. Uh, coming up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I've um, been talking to a lot of people, a few people about it lately. And it's uh, it's amazing that it's coming out and happening. Uh, it's a big one. That's all I'll say. So uh, thanks for watching this. Um, if you've got through this far, well, thanks, I guess. Uh, Deadnet, go over to Deadnet and uh, check out Dave's Picks Volume 15. I think we're going to play uh, Playing in the Band, maybe, and uh, Two Souls in Communion as kind of a listening party, as they call it. Um, but yeah, we have some, uh, we have some good stuff uh, coming up. Um, for this one and again it'll sell out fast so thanks for watching uh, i'm dave and uh got some mountains behind me it's been a bit wavy and windy I, i've been meaning to record this for the last few days but it's been the weather's been either raining or really windy where you couldn't hear me so if you're having a tough time hearing me i apologize but uh that's just the way it is i can't control the, the weather because i don't command the weather um so thanks for watching we'll see you next time